Hi you guys, it's Tanya, and today I want to share with you a little tutorial for an easy, simple card. And it, it takes very little time to make, but it's also fun because it's a shaker box. Look at that. I'm trying not to shake it too bad because I don't want anybody dizzy, but it's super cute sitting on the table, you know, like this. Um, the kids would love it. It's a great idea for a birthday card for kids because they love stuff like this. Love it. Now, I have a couple of options here. <clears throat> in this particular shaker box, and let me see if I can get in closer so you can really see it. In this particular shaker box, I have buttons and little seed beads. Uh, those little micro beads. Uh, these are butterflies and flowers. So it's very simple. And I'm to, the one that I'm gonna make today, I am going to use confetti mylar confetti this is like the stuff you get at a party shop for like a dollar and I found this I need I happen to need a birthday card so I found this that's cut out it says happy birthday star birthday star happy birthday and it also has a bunch of these little stars and stuff in here so and see how the mylar is just really super shiny so I think that it will it will be really fun to work with so I'm gonna go pick out my confetti that I want to use and then I'll come back and show you how to make the card find a card any size will do and then also a matching top piece any size then for shaker boxes you can buy some of the store-bought things but I'm using a Tim Holtz ornate plate packaging it has two different designs plus the small one up at the top that I will be able to add some uh, designs to. Then on the inside, there's a shallower piece. It doesn't have as much detail, but it's still usable. This is taken from another piece of packaging. So on this one, I'm going to line it up on my card, decide where I want it, and then I'm going to flip my card upside down and trace around that area to of the perimeter of my box piece. I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough plastic all the way around so that uh, I can adhere it to the card so that the pieces don't actually fall out. So uh, around the perimeter is where I marked, but we actually need the cardstock to come in to where the bevel starts. So I'm taking a paper piercer and I'm going to score the corners of all four sides so that I can find the placement of the beveled side. I'm kind of cheating it just a little bit, uh, leaving a little extra because I can always cut more off, but I can't cut enough off. Or if I cut too much off, it'll make a mess. So I'm piercing all four sides, and then I'm going to take my pencil and just mark where those piercings are, and then take an X-Acto knife and cut all four sides out. Make sure you cut all the way through. Also, while I'm doing that, I just want to show you that you don't want to use a thin sheet of paper for this. You want to use something that's pretty durable, like a cardstock or a double-sided paper that is thicker stock. Any kind of uh, thin paper will cause the uh, shaker box to uh, be too heavy and possibly uh, rip the paper. You also want to apply some hot glue to the very edge of the beveled part and then adhere it to the back of the uh, cardstock. This way it's secure and it's not going to fall out. Uh, I, I tried it with wet glue, it didn't work. I'm going to pick out my confetti now and add it to the center. I'm also going to add some copper colored glitter, chunky glitter, not the really thin fine glitter. This has to be thick enough to be able to see it, just a little bit. And then I'm going to add a few seed beads to that as well. Now be careful not to tip this over because it will fall. Now I'm going to use another piece of recycled plastic from the packaging trim it down so that it overhangs the edge of the uh, shaker box and then I'm going to glue it really tight right at the edge of uh, where that bevel is. I don't want any of this glitter because it's so small and fine to sip out so I'm just going to be very careful and make sure every single piece is adhered down. If not, just add a little more glue. I don't want anything falling out. Just test your shaker and make sure you're not going to have a mess. And then adhere that top card over uh, the top of the actual card. 
you want to make sure you seal it really good around that edge where the shaker box is because there's added weight. And if you want to, you can always go back and stitch that to make sure it's really secured down. I don't sew. I'm also adding some vintage photo ink around the edges just to kind of give it a little depth. And here we go, adhering the card down. Make sure it's straight, and like I said, just make sure there's a lot of glue around the edges where that actual shaker box is. Now let's decorate it. I'm going to make a bow out of some uh, mustard colored satin ribbon. And I'm just doing kind of like a figure eight, and because satin is one-sided, I'm making sure that the loops stay on the right side. I just used a, a piece of that floral stem to tie that bow together. Get it in place, and I want the tails to kind of hang over the top parts of that box and down the side. And it just kind of gives a nice little finish. And now I'm going to glimmer mist up my uh, flower. This is uh, from I Am Roses, and it has... Um, I'm using like a green color and a blue color, a dark blue color, and I'm making sure I get in all the spots, but it's going to leave it a teal color, a really nice rich teal color to match the paper. I added a little brown to just kind of vintage it up and darken it up a little bit. Now, instead of wasting all of that ink, I have little tags that I keep to the side, and I wipe up that ink with the tag, and then I have a glimmer tag whenever I'm ready to use it. I'm just heat setting that to dry it, adding a little bit more of the darker blue to darken it up a little bit. Now I'm taking some yellow and I'm going to paint back in the stamens that are on the inside of the flower. I learned this technique from Tattered Rose. I watched her video last week and she did this. Great idea. Thanks for sharing. And as you can see, it just really gives a little bit of a definition there where we glimmered over the top of those. Now I'm going to play, place it on my card uh, right over that bow, cover up that wire. And there you go, my card's finished. I'll do some close-up shots of it, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this production. Uh, please leave me comments.